You sit on your throne, arm rested with gold, pearl necklaces carry by blood diamond mold, algae forms your pristine skin, that was once marble, I see your tears thin. Even if you look up, you fear, the olive skin prophets you airbrush, come on dear, stop using our prophets for profit, or using our kids to cover your seven foot state, statue based on hate, race, don't lie to my face. I thought you were all spiritual calm in that, you gave them yoga, namaste, mats, I know what you did to money, you hid it under the covers, doing it for the numbers, five noble peace prices, we know your secret lovers, I don't see peace when you kick my sister out, out of the house she shipped to another land because you can be bothered to fully plan sipping your chai acting like the big man you're just like them mount batten and her dressed in rich robes fake jewels broken souls people around the world have called for the removal of monuments to slavery and empire Yet statues of slavers and colonisers continue to take up our shared public space. Often, they get defended in the name of history. We get told that pulling down these statues would be a form of historical erasure. sense can a statue embody history? We don't tend to learn about history from physical monuments. They don't actually seem to be very good at reminding us to engage with the past. Usually, the only time we actually start talking about what a statue represents is when activists campaign for it to come down, or when they pull it down. When we contest these statu statues, we we are contesting a history that is not widely known, is not sufficiently known. And to the extent to which it is known is distorted and um, kind of refracted through its own self-interest and comes out as heritage or, or whatever. Whereas actually most of the people that we're talking about were awful to white people too, actually. They were just kind of generally pretty awful people. So, um, um, I don't think we, I, I don't think we advance by saying my history is better than yours, not least when we're dealing with a lot of people who don't know their history. Clearly, all of these statues are not very good at actually teaching us about history. Take Britain, for example. People who profited from slavery are commemorated by statues across these countries. Yet we seldom actually talk about the fact that Britain was one of the earliest instigators and major benefactors of the trade in enslaved people. Instead, we tend to learn, incorrectly, that just a few British men basically single-handedly abolished it. Often, it's those who claim they want to defend history who insist that our children learn less about it. Meanwhile, anti-racist activists want the curriculum to include more historical detail about slavery and empire. And they point out that statues promote ideology at the expense of historical detail. These statues were never supposed to act as neutral or complete historical records. We build them to champion ideas and ideals. Often, they tell us that people who profited from slavery and empire deserve to be celebrated for this very reason. In doing so, they diminish all other perspectives and they simplify our rich and complex histories. So we might say that the statues themselves enact a form of historical erasure by embodying exclusionary ideology. They certainly leave out a lot of historical detail. For example, these statues often tell us that someone who stole from and exploited black and indigenous people deserves to be remembered as a philanthropist just because they gave away some of their ill-gained wealth. Even during their own lifetimes, many of these people were criticised and condemned for their actions. Their statues don't convey this sort of historical detail. 
Instead, they glorify individuals in a way that means that polls still show that half of the Dutch, a third of the British, and one in four of the French and the Belgians still believe that their country's former empire is something to be proud of. And why wouldn't they, given this idea is still celebrated all around them? Calling for the removal of these statues is not an attack on history. It's a challenge to the narrow historical perspective they embody and the blinkered ideology they represent. And it's by challenging ideology that we shape the course of history. Activists are targeting statues that glorify individuals who profited from the mass enslavement and exploitation of other people. The atrocities that they committed were enabled by the belief that white people are superior and, in turn, their actions further entrench this belief. Slavery and empire have shaped the world in ways that continue to inform our thinking and skew our life chances. So we can't just set these histories in stone and pretend they're over. They continue to unfold in our present. And we are all always making history, whether or not we admit it. The only question is whether or not we decide to redirect its course. And this is something that we can only begin to do by challenging the kind of ideology that these statues embody. Because if these statues don't really help us learn about history, and if they actually obscure historical detail while promoting ideology that continues to maintain inequality, then what role can they possibly have in an inclusive society? Calling for these statues removal is just one way of saying that we need to engage with our histories in much greater detail, the sort of historical detail that statues can't possibly embody. We need to actively address the ways that these histories continue to structure our present. Our histories are not set in stone. They continue to unfold and we get to decide how to shape them. What do you see? Do you stop and stare? Do you really read the plaques? Do you even notice them? Grey figure, looming, larger than life. You question who we should replace them with. Who serves, deserves, honours, accomplishes enough to be valued by the state, by society, by Susan down the road. Who decides what is enough? And who decides what isn't? Well, not your statues. So static, so sanitized, stripped of serious, senseless crimes, and instead simplified, solidifying a story of the past that is so sickening to anyone who spends time considering the actual reality of their history. They say, take your pick. Keep that figure, change the plaque. Change the figure, change the plaque. Or tear down the figure and the plaque. And then what? A gaping hole in the street? Lingering memories of resistance, provocations of the past and present, sitting in an empty space, offering lessons of riots and rebellion, risk takers and haters. And if making something visible make something else invisible. But making something invisible doesn't necessarily make something else visible. But maybe also making something invisible just heightens that same thing's visibility. What are we left with? Stuck between a lump of metal and an empty space that is heavy with memories and meanings and moments of masterfully told lies so ingrained in society's mind that they are no longer lies, but the truth. In a world without statues, would anything actually change? <laughs>